Uh, welcome back. Um, so I'm going to do a little quick uh, video today, just um, a recap of where Ember is today, at least how I see it. Um, I just wanted you to kind of get a feel for what's going on in the community. Um, sometimes, especially if you haven't been um, following along too closely, or if you're new to Ember, then you haven't, um, you probably don't know what's going on or where Ember is. Um, so I'd just like to start with um, just Ember has this new idea that's kind of getting traction. Uh, it's called Ember Editions. And it's basically a um, a marker in in just a, a name for an, a, a new like name, kind of like a new release almost, but it's not really a release. It's more of like um, packaging up when the programming model shifts. And so um, there might be like new features, but and and they're all documented separately, but together there's not really a cohesive story for um, a change in how Ember works now. And so there's this push now for a new edition called Ember Octane. And this edition is um, kind of brings in a good amount of features like um, a new layout for your projects. Um, also it has uh, Glimmer components, which is basically a new, a very simple base class for your components um, that only has like a handful of hooks and a couple of properties as opposed to like um, for 30 or 40 in multiple base classes for the current version. Um, and also things like angle bracket components, um, which is just the syntax that kind of like what React uses. Um, so you have like the HTML brackets and then you have a capital letter and it's like class B, class names for components instead of curly braces and a dash. Um, and then there are other things like updating the guides to show kind of this new programming uh, model uh, as well as um, a new website and um, also the shift to move to decorators um, and a few other small uh, enhancements and features. Uh, some, and some of these have already landed, like angle bracket components uh, are usable today, as well as um, at args and this in your templates, which makes for uh, a more clear programming model when you're in the template to know where data is coming from, which has always been kind of like magical for Ember. Um, and so, this is kind of like um, all these changes are kind of building up now. Uh, there's a lot of strike teams that are working on different features. Um, and the goal is to probably have most of this stuff ready by like EmberConf, which is um, late March. Um, I'm not gonna hold my breath for that date just because you know how open source is. Um, they are software development in general, um, especially when it's uh, open source and there's a lot of different people from different companies, um, it's hard to pinpoint a date. But it's it's a really cool t time to experiment, at least with some of these new features. And it's kind of tough for newcomers to do that right now just because um, the, the guides have not been updated to show kind of these new patterns. Um, which are really nice just because they're more explicit and there's less magic and it's kind of, um, you get like inner HTML semantics with some of the new stuff. Uh, so that means there's not special properties on the base class, like for like tag name or class names, array. Like those are those were previously special things, but now you just work in the HTML and the HTML you see is what you get when your components render. So like those are really cool things um, that help now. Um, I think you can do um, some of this experimentation. Experimentation it's kind of hard to know what um, what's what you can kind of play around with. And there's a cool project out. Uh, it's called I think it's called uh, Ember CLI Create, um, and basically it has like 
kind of like Ember, Ember New, but it has some options and you can create a new Octane app, basically how it is now. Um, and I would kind of warn you just, um, I would play around with that, but I'd warn you that um, module unification is still, which is like the new um, file system layout for where files go. That's still kind of rough. Um, and there's still an RFC open for that to kind of figure out how to handle importing templates from add-ons. Um, so, I mean, there, that's still being figured out and not all things are still supported, so there are bugs. So feel free to try that out, but do report bugs if you find them. Um, but like, I mean, there's also some add-ons called sparkles components, which is like the glimmer component syntax. Um, but at the same time, those are kind of missing element modifiers, which is another RFC that's open, uh, which basically lets you um, either add kind of like um, ref and react or um, to basically clean up or set up um, state based on uh, DOM elements. And that that's really cool. And that helps kind of with the Glimmer components because Glimmer components don't inherently have access to the DOM because that's um, it, it's kind of, it gets tricky. How do you clean things up? And especially if a template is, um, I think it's outer HTML semantics, which is the template in your template file is the whole DOM that you see. And so like if you have an if and it switches and then DOM nodes are removed or they're, they're added, it's kind of hard to manage that from the component. And so instead you add these element modifiers onto the element and when the element is created, it'll fire a, a function or if it's destroyed, it'll fire a function. Um, and there'll probably be other ones in the future. Um, and I can see like animation stuff being really uh, cool with that. Um, but really there's a lot of these, um, a lot of these little projects that are going on to kind of get this whole unified vision of Ember Octane. And um, that's kind of where Ember's going. It's, gonna, it's, it's really a new programming model. Um, and th the reason that they're doing additions instead of a major release is because um, historically Ember has not really introduced new features in uh, major releases. Major releases are mainly for uh, removing deprecated APIs. So if an API has been deprecated for a while and a major release comes out, th those are removed. And so basically, um, kind of new features, even though they're, they're added during like minor releases, but they don't really have a place to shine, like a marketing um, to kind of show that. And um, so, so this kind of the idea of additions kind of helps with that. And I think this, this idea came from um, the Rust language uh, community. They did that first. Um, and also a lot, a lot of the work that's in additions or in the Octane edition came from the Ember 2018 blog posts that uh, were asked for by the core team earlier this year after EmberConf. Um, and like there was a huge um, reaction to that and a lot of people submitted blog posts of what they'd love to see, uh, what Ember could do better, what um, just like, and everybody's pet project too, I'm sure. Uh, but the core team has got together and kind of combined all the all those blog posts, looked at them, and they have uh, made an RFC basically for Octane uh, about what's what's in that. And so, I mean, that's that's kind of where things are. Um, I'll leave some links in in the in the in the description um, so you can have a look at some of these RFCs, what's really in there, um, and uh, I'll probably do a video in the future of. Uh, kind of some of these, like maybe an Octane app uh, as it is now and like how that looks and how it compares to the current model. And so, I mean, if you are working on legacy apps, it's, you still have to kind of know both in a way, um, just because you'll have to transition from a legacy to a newer version. But really it's, it's a way to have a new set of defaults for applications going forward. Um, so that doesn't mean uh, current current syntax is broken, 
uh, no, that current syntax is going to live alongside it. And I think things will probably eventually be deprecated, but there's not, there hasn't really been any mention of current, like curly brace components being deprecated or anything like that, or ember.component. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that was um, informative for you. Yeah, please subscribe or like, or yeah, thanks for coming.